about to do a class on the 10 plagues. No, but there's a reason I brought this. I'll tell you in a moment. All right. So my friends, welcome to a combination of Parshat Vayera and Bo. Hello, Facebook world. We're having an intimate family share of the people who have just a few of us here who have always been so supportive of the class. We didn't have the stamina to make a big production this week, so it's so cute. Should I just show them? Yeah, yeah. sure. Just show them. I'm getting more views for my face. <laughs> I'm just getting more views. <laughs> Having an intimate family sheer. Leora, you want to say hi? No. Hi. There we go. This is our family sheer. And this is it's the fam. Seder, really. It's Obviously. a mini Seder. Yeah. Woo! Uh, Rabbi, Rabbi, you want to say hi? Ah, so long. <laughs> Abby, you want to say hi? Show them, the per- show them the Persian ice cream. Show them the Persian ice cream. We got some brownies like from Leora, some, some sush, yeah. some Persian ice cream. But unfortunately, it's not chlavi straw. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to learn Parshat Vayera and Parshat Bo. Uh, we're really actually not going to learn the Parshat so much as the Ten Plagues. And the reason is... Um, because yeah. it's been 101 days, and um, what we can do is pray, and what we can do is learn Torah. So we're gonna, that's like been on my mind the whole time, is more Torah, more Torah, hashtag more Torah. So for the salute of the hostages and the soldiers and peace in the world, we are getting together to learn Taira. Um, this year is also because of a woman, if you're watching, named Kat Corin, who says she watches every week to learn Parsha, and I realized I didn't have a good class mm-hmm. on the 10 plagues. So I was going to just do it Facebook live from my desk, and then I was like, no, let's call the Ellie as Yush. And he said, let's do this! I don't say anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how you sound. <laughs> no, but I had no, like, emotion. And we also <laughs> want to say hi to Izzy in Israel. Hi, Izzy in Israel. <laughs> Right? Just, Mazel Tov, you just had a baby two yeah. days ago. That's oh, incredible. Oh my God, and these are the best. We want to thank the Balters. <laughs> if not for the Balters, I'd have no friends in LA. Here's another Balter. Oh. Um, this is my adopted family. And uh, they, they always pull through for us and surprise us with sweet things. And also, we want to thank Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, for this opportunity to learn Torah. The Torah can actually be interesting. You know, we're some of the few lucky people in the world that get to learn Torah in a way that's like, wow, this is actually amazing and riveting and touches my heart. So that's epic. And also just a few shout outs, dedications, and then we'll all put in dedications. Um, my friend's grandma just passed away, so her... Aliyah, Neshama should have an Aliyah, Gitzel, Gerta, Bat, Yitzchak, Alevi. Also, the Balter family dog passed away this week. Aww. So, in honor of Coco, you know, animals are really, really special in the Shamas, and they've been with them for almost 17 years. So, I know it's funny to say Aliyah, Neshama to Coco, but like literally, like, may Coco like, be so blessed. Coco has a Neshama. Coco does have a Neshama. Mamash, seriously. And also, we want to wish Rafu Shlema to Gidon. Our friend Gidon just had back surgery. Gidon Yako, Five will bending. Laru should have a Fush Lema, Miriam Batilana should have a Fush Lema. Anyone want to throw some names? Rafaita Baslea Golda. For a Fush Lema? Aviad Shlomo Ben Shonaha Shprinza. Cool. Anyone else names? Want to throw names for anything? Moshe Ben Helen with Fush Lema. Moshe Ben Helen with Fush Lema. Read about the soldiers. Read about Right, yes, of course, all the soldiers, their families. Everyone's today. Everyone from today's Pikua. Okay, cool. Let's go. So here's... Okay, y'all ready? Okay, we also... I don't know if you guys could see this on Facebook Live. We also all have a glass of wine because we're going to start... We're gonna we said it's a plague class, so let's go. Good luck, Sparty's trying to catch up. Ready? Pinky's in. No, I don't do Ready? Pinkies. Here we go. Dam Svadea Shim Ara Devesh Shim Ara Shim Ara Shim Ara Shim Ara Shim Ara 
Oh, you get take my glass and dip. You you cannot dip spiritually. You must dip. Pass in my glass, the bro. No, 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 no excuses here. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do tonight. I'm assuming it'll take an hour, but you guys go when you need to go. It's all good. Family is family, so be real. Say what? I know. It's big. And, it's seriously shocking. Okay. So. The face up with this pillow. Lazalto. Mazalto. Now we can start the series. Okay. You know what's amazing about this? I was going to say it at the end, but you see how chaotic this is and we're like as if doing a Pesach Seder? So the coolest thing about Pesach actually is called, it's called the Seder. But the irony is there is no Seder. Nothing is ever in order. And that's really the deepest message for our lives. Right? You think, like, nobody has their life together. Like, people think I have my life together. <laughs> you know? But it's like, no, like, nothing's in order. No one's got it together. And, like, that's also Beseder. Like, that, that's everything is in perfect order. So that's a very amazing lesson to for, especially when we're talking about the plagues, right? The plagues are freaking chaos. And yet, everything is in perfect order. Okay. So what we're going to do tonight is seven fun facts about... Oh, wow, everyone has paper and pens. This is like my dream come true. We're going to use seven fun facts about the plagues, and then we're going to go into each plague, tell a little bit about the Mitrashim, like, wow, the epic, gory craziness, and things like, wow, did you know snakes came with every plague according to the Mitrash? Um, and then and I'm going to ask you guys what you learned or what you think about the plagues. That's going to be our finale. So three-part class. You got it. Okay, here we go. Fun facts about the plagues. First of all, how long did God have the plagues in mind? Ooh. He must have always been planning them. He must have always been planning them. That's one idea. What does that mean? Someone online answered. How long? How long was God planning the plagues? Since Yosef. Since Yosef. That's a great idea. Oh. Why? You said Masabreshis. Why? Uh, Since the, the beginning. In the, the beginning. The whole, the whole world's created in the six days, but, but there the was ten the, things yeah. according to Pirkei oh, Avot. According to Pirkei Avot, which I think it's five, six, it says that the plagues were on Moshe's staff, which oh. is either oh. sapphire or blue. Yeah, we did this. And the plagues yeah, were written yeah. on there, right? It says, Datsach Adash. Be'achav, that engraved in Moshe's staff that was created right before Shabbat, on the sixth day of creation, before even the first Shabbat, the plates were engraved on Moshe's staff, which was made in the world. So fascinatingly enough, I'm so, I totally think you're raising your hand. This is so awkward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fascinating. No, he's not. He cut his finger. He's not raising his hand. I'm not ignoring him. He's giving you half a blessing. <laughs> so, yes, according to our sages, to Pirkei Avot, the plagues have been in God's mind since even before the first Shabbat, and they were created in the twilight. So that's already something really fascinating, right? And this staff we know is passed down. It was originally Adam's staff passed down to, we'll just go for it, Enoch, to Noah, to Shem, to Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. Yaakov brings it to Egypt, passes it to Yosef. They pillage Yosef's fortunes after he dies. Yitro takes it. Yitro becomes the father-in-law of Moses. And as we learned at the New Year's party, this is the source of the sword and the stone for anyone that knows that it got stuck in the ground. Say what? You think it's the same staff? Same staff. Yeah. Same Moshe staff. Moshe's staff is the same as Yosef at Sadi? It's the same as Adam Arishan. That's what's up. He and he pulls it out of the ground. It was stuck. And that's how Yitro knew that Moshe was someone special. Besides the fact that he looked like a hot 10-foot Egyptian. Yeah. 15 foot. 15 foot. 10 yeah, amma. Thank you. Uh, Rabbi! Bam. That's not showing me you. <laughs> <laughs> Make me blush, make me something. Okay, that, by the way, comes from Midrash, Midrash Shmot Rabba 8.3, is that it was a blue diamond sapphire. But something that I forgot and learned again tonight is the Zohar actually says, I always teach it that this amazing staff that had the plagues on it was blue sapphire. But do you know what the, uh, what the Zohar says the staff was made out of? Mm. This is cray cray. A branch of the tree of knowledge. Oh. Right? That's what the Zohar says in Zohar Chodesh B'Shalach 38b Yelkut Reuveni in Chukat. 
Bam! But that's actually why I bought this shaker, is because this shaker we got in Peru, and this is actually made of ayahuasca wood, and... I <laughs> don't even know what the tree of knowledge was, so it may have looked like, this is the closest thing, I, I love props, and this is the closest thing I could find in my house to what that looks like, so you can touch it, maybe Datsach, I can never say it, Datsach Adash Berchav was in carved in the tree of knowledge. Now here's my question. Did you guys, I was looking this stuff all up online. Did you ever think, hey, where's the staff now? Mm. Isn't that interesting? We know that our own staff, which blossomed, doesn't sound snaky or anything. We know that our own staff, which blossomed, is in what? In the Arona Kodesh, in the, cov- the Ark of the Covenant, you know, the one that, um, what's this guy, Indiana Jones went looking for? That's a real story of Wendell Jones, who went searching for the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, that's a true story. That's why it's called Raiders of the Lost Ark. Wow. It's the Ark is in the Arona, the thing that was in the center of the temple. And all this. I know! <laughs> His children converted. And Wendell Jones' children converted. He stayed B'nai Noach so he can go and search and find these things, the Dafka. And he stayed B'nai Noach so he could go search for the Ark because if he was Jewish, there'd be serious ramifications. If he ever touched the Ark, he'd drop dead. But so we know our own staff is in the ark, which is somewhere either in the Vatican or it deep underneath the ground of the Beit HaMikdash. No, no. But no, Moshe's no. staff, there's actually not a tradition of where it is. And I thought that was amazing. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool to see this staff again? Okay, cool. So second thing. Um, do you know, oh, should we do it again? Dam, Svardeya, Kiyamim, break it down. Aram, Okay, so... What are the templates, Rabbi Nigeli? Oh, we're going to go there in a second. Rabbi Nigeli. What do you mean, what are they? What are they? Oh, we're going to do it. Okay, you want to do seven tonight? No, we're going to do them all. We already passed seven. We only have three in this week's Parsha's bow. But I figure we need a ten-place class because of this chick cat corn. She didn't have anything to learn this week. The only share I have online about these Parshas is how Pharaoh hardened his heart. But the plagues are amazing. We're spending at least ten minutes on each plague, right? We're gonna do what we do. We'll see who's we'll see who sticks around. Did you bring the tubi? <laughs> so you know it's crazy. So I was looking up why why if we're focusing a whole class on the plagues, why do we dunk our pinky? Does anyone know? Because you're sad for them. Because you're sad for them, so like, there's no known source for this idea that we don't rejoice over the downfall of our enemies. Like, I'll give you a source. Proverbs 24, 17. It's an Ashkenazi custom that we... Not the finger. Oh, yeah? Oh, you poured out. But why are we pouring out wine, and what does that have to do with the plagues? So I looked and looked, and what I found is there's no actual source. Some people attribute it to Rabbi Shimshon and... What's his name? Why am I... can't say his name. Rabbi Hirsch. Shimshon. Thank you. Um, but really, actually, there wasn't really a source. And so what's interesting is that it's for us to think about. I, I, I had my thought is, you know, why are we putting the wine on our hands for the plagues? And I realized because the plagues are not about this external thing that happened to the Egyptians. It's actually us reflecting on the <coughs> shitstorms in our life. <laughs> pardon me, and realizing what messages we have to learn from it. So really the du- the blood is on our hands. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Like the messages are for us. So we the literally- Responsibility? Oh, yeah, or, or like a responsibility to look at everything in the world and see it as a reflection on us. My favorite line is that war on the outside comes from war on the inside. And really, if we want to help with this war in Israel, we need, whoa, I, can- I can't actually teach this because I have not done a good job, but we need to make peace within the relationships in our own life, and mm-hmm. that will bring peace in the relationships in the world. The only reason stuff's messed up on the outside is because it's mm-hmm. messed up on the inside. So I thought, oh, maybe that's why. Fun fact number three. Does anyone know what the 10 plagues parallel? The 10 commandments. Okay, so each plague and the spherot, the, the 10 commandments, and, yes? No, no, I was going to say, it's actually an idea from Svasa Amis, whose your was... Today. Okay. Oh, wow. That, cool. The, that, the, that the ten plagues were brought into the world to parallel, like... Yeah, yeah, to, to parallel to, what? To, to parallel the Ten Commandments. Um, to, 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 to go, to is it to parallel the Ten Commandments? Or actually, did the spot no, Emmett say to parallel the Ten Masse Bereshit? No, 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 the Ten... The Ten Commandments. The ten commandments. <laughs> He says, he says, um, okay, so Ten Commandments. Mas- to, 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 to transform into the, like. Oh, to transform the yeah, plagues into, into the Ten Commandments. Yeah. That's fascinating. We could do a whole study on that. But my favorite aspect is actually the plagues parallel 
how God created the world, but in reverse. So, right, so we have God creates light, and then what's the second to last commandment? God creates Dark, darkness. darkness. We have uh, God creates life through water, right? If you want to take the evolutionary stance too, through water, and then what happens? Life through water, and then it becomes death through water. And then also what was created? Vegetation is created, animals are created, humans are created, and what happens in the plagues? The vegetation is completely destroyed. destroyed. The animals are completely destroyed. And then in the last plague, the humans are destroyed. destroyed. So it's very, very interesting. Fun fact number four about the plagues before we get into them. Does anyone know the parallel of what a woman goes through in this world that has to do with the plagues? Birth. Birth. birth, yeah. No, the birth. I know that stuff. The birth, Beshatova, is Yamsuf. Is the splitting of the sea, boys? Is actually when the waters break. Whoa! I thought I was gonna get a whoa on that one. No. Well, that's, that, that's crazy. Wait, did you, you ever know that though? For later, but... uh, yeah. You know that one. Yeah. Did anyone not know that one? That's pretty cool. I mean, the splitting cool. of the sea well, is parallel that, but... to the waters breaking, and then it opens into a channel, and we come through and we're born a new nation. Yeah. Um, Woo! Is, it, is the number 10 also related to the trials Abraham t- Yes, all the 10s are the same. And Kirkeava talks a lot about it. You can check mm. it out. Kirkeava? Mm-hmm. Talks about the... Five, six. Five talks about the 10s. 10 things that were created, 10 things this, 10 things that, 10 things this. It's not ex- it's not completely inclusive. But. Mm-hmm. So what what before birth, before we go through Yamsuf, what does a woman have to deal with? Contractions. Contractions, Contractions are these very yeah. painful experiences that feel like death. And so that's fun fact number four about the plague. It's really they were like contractions before we were birthed in a nation. Mm-hmm. Say what? Oh, in your experience, they should be beautiful and easy and smooth. You're going to breathe right through them. You're going to hypnobirth through them. Ain't going to be no thing. And the rest of us are going to have babies soon. It's going to be easy. Because you guys did such a good job on Shalom Bayit. The curse is going to be lifted. You're going to have a pain-free birth. Can we get an amen? Amen. Okay. We might still have work to do, but we'll get there. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay fun fact number five and if you know this don't answer because it's going to blow the minds of the people who don't know this does anyone know how long the plagues took place over what per- time period Isn't that like Isn't that a couple years? opinions no. one week one week could be well, how long the plates? No, Ten like, years. The whole duration of the plagues. Don't say it if yeah, you don't know. know. The, the whole duration of the plagues. How long did it take? Guesses. Like multiple years. Yeah, wasn't it one year for each? Okay, one year, multiple years. I don't know. Okay, I'm yeah, not even going to make plague. you guys guess. I don't want to. I thought you raised your hand. <laughs> ding, 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 Leila Balter for the win. Mm-hmm. Most sages say that the plagues took place over one year. Most opinions say that each plague was one week and then there was three weeks of warning. Some opinions say there was three weeks of plague and one week of warning. But this was a really hardcore year. You know, when you learn it in school, you usually feel like, oh, plague number one, blood happened for a day. Frogs here, frogs there, frogs are jumping everywhere. Right. One morning when Pharaoh awoke in his bed, there were frogs on his head and frogs on his bed. Frogs on his toes and frogs on his toes. Frogs here, frogs here. Jumping oh, right. So you think that happens in like a day or two? And did you just do a low base? That was great. I did, yeah, that was, that was great. great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so the plagues actually lasted a full year. When I first learned that, I was really, really, really surprised. And I'll tell you another fun fact that wasn't in here: the warnings before the plagues. How does that make sense? God is trying to wipe out an empire that my teacher Leah compares to the Holocaust. She said that the plagues were so bad that like the bodies that were stacked, well, the, the, before the plagues, the slavery was so bad that there was 400 entrances of the palace according to the Midrash and each one had bodies stacked up as high as the, the as high as the gates. Mm-hmm. Like babies' arms are sticking out of the walls. It was nothing short of a Holocaust, Egypt. So you'd think that if a nation treated us oh so poorly that we'd want to wipe them out, why are we warning them? Warning or warning? Warning. Chuba, we Chuba, warned Chuba. them, but God warned them. That's what we do. Chuba, Chuba. We're doing it Israel right now. We, thank you. And that's what was really yeah. fascinating to me because thing. nothing. Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, Reb Shlomo. Melech Shlomo says there's nothing new under the sun. Also and was a Also was a Reb Shlomo, right? And the idea, though, is that for some reason we warn the people that are trying to destroy us were so humanitarian. Like, that's why it's such a basa. It's such a shame that if anyone is watching that, you know, like, we can just tell you firsthand from all of our friends in the army, like, the craziest thing, the Israeli army is actually so humane that will warn 
people before we're gonna bomb if we have to to so it's the same thing three times we, we warned them three, three times we warned them like yeah three three weeks, weeks, between, between, the yeah and the little tap on the building right so please god all the truth yeah, should come out but it's pretty crazy yeah, yeah. you know it says <laughs> like even god was laying out this precedent that we're gonna warn before plagues which is just kind of wild three warnings like three weeks that's three warnings like three weeks like, yeah uh, did you share that shira is that you no um, yeah. She, yeah. we both yeah. Ariana Grande um. <laughs> <laughs> okay also I think God wanted Pharaoh to like recognize God and that yes. would be a great tradition if, so, God, if or Pharaoh would have if, if Pharaoh would have acknowledged God it would have been great <laughs> right that's oh, the whole right. purpose of all of it right the whole purpose of all the plays is to acknowledge God but I had oh, some yeah. weird thoughts on that as I was running today I was like that's really awkward like I am your God. I'm destroying everything. I know that it's me. And I'm like, hope no shadow candidates just watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What are you gonna do? <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna love it. Really. I know. They're gonna love it. But, but like, oh, that's so hot. <laughs> no, but really, it's a little weird. Like God wants us to recognize Him through the plagues. That's a little interesting. I don't know. We could talk about that at the end, but. Okay, fun fact number six, and then we're almost at the plagues. Fun fact number six, the Parshas of Vayera and Bo have all the plagues. Vayera has seven, and Bo has three. You're going to know this for the rest of your life. How cool is this? What's the gematria of Bo? Ben three. Aleph. Three. <gasps> three. So it's really fun fact. It helped me ever since I learned this. I was like, no, there's only three in Parsha Bo. Because once you learn it, you you got in, and then you know oh, how many are in Vayera. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, Bo is bet is two, yeah, Aleph is, is is one, so three. So there's three plagues in Bo, which leaves seven for the parsha before, which was last week, Vayera. You have to know that there's ten. You have to know there's ten, but I think it, <laughs> raise your hand online if you know there's ten plagues. That's easy. Oh my god, how cute! Someone's posting frog <laughs> emojis. <laughs> okay, cool. And fun fact number seven. Oh, this is my favorite thing of the whole night. My favorite thing of the whole night. Guys, if anyone's tired, there's tea and coffee. I saw you yawn. <laughs> okay, Parsha Bo, the end of the Parsha after all the plagues. At the 10th plague, what's, what happens to, what do we have to do to make sure that the firstborns, what's, what, how do we protect ourselves? Blood. Yeah, we put blood on the doorpost. So first of all, this is a fun fact. This is me in India. And they killed Wait, the they killed the Passover <laughs> they killed the Passover offering. There's the lamb head, oh. lamb head. I'll pass it on. We're gonna yeah. do a class at the Lost Tribes at the Katz's house, oh, please God, soon, nice. if I'm still here. But this, then they take the slaughtering of the lamb and they pour the blood in the bowl, and then we went around and painted blood on the doorposts of all the houses in India. Uh, Wait, in Chedrolu, um, in Kota Redi Palem, we would go hut to hut where they where they write shakai on the doorposts because they don't have enough mezuzahs. They, what, they're Jewish? They practice Judaism. Halacha is a whole other story with all the lost tribes around the world. That's the next class you're coming to! Whoa. Lost tribes That's at the right. cats's, please <laughs> God. This is them making Cassis. eggs for Passover. I'll, this is next class. The Here's the Passover. Passover. Okay, this is them putting oh. blood on the doorposts. Okay, so I got to go around and put blood on the doorposts with them. Is this the name Rasha? No, this is B'nai Ephraim. This is more controversial, but we love you if you're watching. And this is actually Zimbabwe, and this is the Passover sacrifice that I watched them do, which as a vegetarian is very difficult, but they do a Passover sacrifice in Zimbabwe, in the bush, 14 hours out of the oh, main city. Oh, we sac oh no, that's my Shlomo Karli about Haggadah. Oh, and behind <laughs> it, well, because, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's sacrifice of Shlomo. Sorry, but sorry. behind it, you'll see hanging lambs, which was also really, uh, you know, I have a thing of going to Passover sacrifices. So anyways, just so you know, this cool stuff is happening in the world. But I That's told amazing. you that my favorite thing I was going to tell... Isn't that amazing? That it's amazing. absolutely amazing. Yeah. And There's so many more. There was 200 <laughs> black as the night Africans at that Seder in Zimbabwe that came out of the bush. Wow. wow. Like, what do you mean they came out of the bush? Meaning the bush of Africa. They weren't coming out of the cities. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, the they're in villages. They're in like the bush here, the, bush here. That's the Lembe residence. tribe. <laughs> Yo, the Lembe tribe that spans across South Africa, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe is 150,000 strong, and over 50% of them test for the Kohen gene. So this wow. is a plan. Wow. Wow. That's, yeah, we test for the Kohen gene. Yeah, yeah. More Lembe have the Kohen gene of South and Southeast wow. Africa than we, than we do over here. Wow. Us little whites. Wow. 
Okay, but that's not why I wanted to tell you about this for the 10th leg. I want to tell you about this because there's a dinner idea. If you're hosting Shabbos dinner, please serve your people. Please, here's the best idea. You serve tomato soup like a bowl of blood. And then you put in your tomato soup a breadstick with a certain herb on it. With what did we paint the doorposts? What was that called? We know what it was called. It was hyssop. We used hyssop, but does anyone know what famous Israeli herb is made out of hyssop? Zatar! So if you want to make a Parshat bow dinner, you make tomato soup and you stick like a like a baguette and you put wow. za'atar, you make za'atar bread and you dip it in your tomato soup and you have blood on the door post Shabbos dinner! <laughs> yes, I've done it before. Yes, the guests love it. I highly recommend it. Tell your mom. <laughs> Come up with, we're, we're talking about a kosher cookbook according to the Parshas, but anyways. Okay, now we've done seven fun facts. We're going to review them really quick so you know what we talked about, and then we're going to get into the Parshas, okay? And guys, if anyone has to go, I'm not offended, because I know Ellie wants to learn Torah all night long. That's yes. what happens when you get a rabbi in the house. We cheers for Rabbi Ellie. Oh, yeah. Okay, first, first thing, I know, seriously. I know, I actually forwarded him your message. <laughs> I see everything in this town. It's true, <laughs> sorry, I should have asked permission. Okay. No, no. It was fair. He said Ellie's the best, so I just forwarded it to him. Okay, so check this out. The first fun fact we learned that the ten plagues were... Is it hot or is it me? It's you. You're it's right. <laughs> 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 what's the temperature? Do you want some more? Can we open it now? Sure. Don't open the windows. You didn't realize you were wrong. It's not the worst embarrassing thing. It's pretty good. Want a brothel? Want a brothel? Going once. Going for what? The embarrassing stuff. How about the Parnassa? Amen. Amen. I opened it up for you. Thank you. Like the splits. The first thing we learned is that the plagues have been... The plagues have been in Hashem's mind since when? Creation. Since First Friday of creation. It was on Moshe's staff, which was either blue, or the sapphire, or a branch from the tree of... Great, that was fun fact two. One. Fun fact number one is that we don't have a source that tells us why we removed the wine. Interesting. Fun fact number three, that the ten plagues parallel the ten... Utterances of creation, the sphero, but we learned about the creation utterances that it, things literally go backwards. God created light, God created darkness. You guys, this is karma for how I was as a student in school. <laughs> True story for my sister Joanna, who's watching. One time I dragged her through a Chabad shear. And <laughs> we, we ended up in one of those hysterical laughing fits so bad they stopped the whole shear, asked us to leave. And I'm someone may or may not have beat their pants, but um, fun fact number four: that the that that the the contractions of the plague are likened to the contractions of because after we go through the water breaks, of the water breaks. Fun fact number five: we learned that the there's also ten like centimeters till the baby. Oh, wow. <gasps> Okay. We, also 10 months, months yeah. even though 9 months is fallacy, right? That's true. Okay, so we learned that the plague lasted, lasted how long? Sorry. How long did the plagues last for? One year. And fun fact number 6 was that we learned about Vaera and Bo. How many plagues does Vaera have in it? And how many does Bo? Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Either three weeks of plague or one week of warning or both. Most sages say that it was one week of plague, except for darkness, that I had six days. That's for another day. Um, but yeah, some actually say it was the reverse. But it was freaking brutal Who either way. It was the what I wish I had my sources, but I started preparing three hours ago. Would you need 12 plagues yeah. to come up with the That's year? so not true. I was studying. No, the the, the problem was yeah, I just know. learned this week that you up. can't... Um, turned down pages and books on Shabbos I didn't know. So all of Shabbos I was studying the plagues, but I had no post-its and I couldn't turn down pages. I just learned that I didn't. You can't matter. turn pages on Shabbos? You can't. You can't. What? Oh, I hope I'm wrong. You can't, you can't pull. Dog, pull. You're saying, you thought you said turn pages. Like I, you no, turn down. Do Anyways. Dog 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 so, okay. so. And the oh, seven oh, fun oh, facts oh, about oh, the plagues oh, is oh, that oh, what oh, should oh, you oh, cook oh, in oh, Parashat Bo? The soup. 
Oh my god, what's going on here? There's a lot going on. The salad. Hummus and chips? Uh, Wait, you should cook Ooh. the soup with the tomato soup. No, it's that herb. Fun fact, this cooked tomato yeah, soup with what herb was his up? Zatar. They painted the doors with Zatar. Everyone has Zatar at your Shabbos table. Now, are you ready to get into the 10 plagues? Because Yoah yes. wants to know what they are. Yes. Okay. So here's some of the plagues I know better, some of the plagues I know less, so some you're gonna get a lot of info and some we're gonna go over in like three seconds, okay? Um, all my notes are in spot in storage, so we'll have to get me to make Aliyah before I can give a proper share. What are the spots? Yeah, all my stuff's in spot. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go, let's do it again. Get your cups out, get your napkins ready. Five. A six, a seven, five, eight, six, eight, seven, eight, dumb, Svardaya, Kehim, Arav, Dever, Shekhin, Barat, Arve, Choshech, Makape, Choroh. Okay, so the first one is, Yoel, this one's for you. You wanted to know? And it's the color of my scarf and why I'm wearing this jewelry. Just kidding, that just worked out. Blood. Blood. What happened, guys? Blood. What happened? The rivers, the rivers of the sea turned blood. blood. No, all, the all the water in the entire turned blood. Maybe, except for the Jews. Except for the Jews. Except for the Jews. All the water turned to blood. Specifically, the source of their water was the Nile. Nile, Nile. Nile, River, turned blood Nile well. River turned to blood. But it wasn't just like thin blood. It was like thick, thick. coagulated, Jesus. stinking Jesus. blood that killed all of the fish in the Nile. And therefore, you guys know how dead fish smells? Oh. Horrible! How come in the prince of Egypt when Moses went into the water, it was the water around Oh. Uh, and not blood. Next year, share at the Winkler's house. Oh, <laughs> yes, please. Hopefully, yes, yes. we'll be in Israel with you. Oh, yeah. That's the plan. Why, why, why specifically the Nile? Because what did Pharaoh think that he was? He was the god of the Nile. They thought that the Nile itself was the god. The, and the Nile itself was a god. Yeah, uh, actually, what I didn't tell you in here, because I didn't want to do eight fun facts, was that all of the plagues, actually, uh, many commentators say that each plague was targeting a different Egyptian god. Oh. That they, they had so many different gods. Pharaoh had a book of gods. This is in the Pshat. It's in the simple text of the Chumash. That um, they had a whole book of gods, and that each of the plagues was like a, a demolishing of that god. Right? So we have... The Nile. Frogs. That, Frogs are against the God? There was a frog god. There were all these different gods. No, there was like different gods, That's like right. the god of the swamps, let's say, or the god of the sun. That was Hence, really like eight gods. Was, no, 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 no. This was like the, the main gods, let's say. Yeah, so, right. for example, you never seen the Ra, we're not really supposed this, to say the names of the god, but that's like a known one place? that we talk what about, was the god of the sun. What defines a god? They worshipped it. Which is actually, I learned in a Chabad shir this week. would also define a shepherd. You're asking fantastic questions. Can we get to it at the end and you'll, that'll be your fun fact? He wants to leave. That's what he's asking. You want to leave? I'm, I'm, I'm asking you questions. What was it? I'm asking you questions. He asked what defines a god. Like what, they, they believed it had power. They believed it had rulership. And they believed that you should worship it. So I was learning. I was listening to, oh my God, and cookies? Whoa. Abundance. My God. That's Welcome to the vault. Para? We don't know. We'll find out shortly. So I, I, I don't want to interrupt for sure, but I, I did hear something on Paro why they confided him as a god. Spit it, boy. Spit it. So what 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 I heard from, from Rabbi Rose, I was at his house this childish, and what he said was Dairy that cookies. they defined Paro as a god because he didn't need to the use the bathroom. Right, that's one of the Mijashim well, that, that God told Moshe to meet him yeah. out the, it, um, early in the morning. Yeah, early in the morning, like, because he would go do his business and pretend he didn't need to eat, drink, or use the restroom, which is so weird. He didn't say like, that's the worst part. <laughs> he didn't say <laughs> But it's actually really interesting, because you think about it, because, like, that's such a silly thing, like, oh, you don't go to the bathroom, you're a god. Like, I, I, that's one of those Torah facts that's cool, but then it's like, wait, what? Like, really weird. It's not the cat, fam. Like, we know. <laughs> it's not the cat, fam? Stop the cat, fam. Stop the cat? 
The cap is the BS. Cap is the, yeah. Oh, are you capping? I see this when I'm, I try, I scroll on TikTok at night. You're clearly not following my social media content. I am on Instagram and TikTok. You're like, eight months to figure out what cap I know, I've been seeing it a lot. You're capping, you're capping. Yeah, it took me a while. What's on your For You page? And what comes up on your TikTok when you scroll? Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to understand what she was saying. Okay, hold up. Guys, we're only on the first plank. There's ten. You deal with the consequences if you're talking. I missed my meeting, so we're good. You did? Oh, we're so blessed. He canceled any This is how you make the big money. Okay, why? It sounds like World War III is going on in this house. What is going on? I'm just serving Crap. food. Crap. Okay. I my four so guys, it's not five. just that the Nile was filled with blood, but it says in the Midrash, and it, it's, this is all from the Midrash, everything I'm saying tonight, that the, everyone see these curtains? That the curtains of the palace were dripping with blood. Wow. That the eyes of the idols and the statues started crying blood. Wow. Okay, it wasn't so water. That, That's not water. It just, this Everywhere. is, this is what the Mijashim said. These are the things that stood out to me in my mind. Oh yeah, go right ahead. I, I'd like to brag about the quality of my chumash. And check this out. It's split on Parshat Bo. Split it out. This is Jewish, no, what is it called when you flex? This is Jewish flexing when your sidur or your chumash are falling apart. Flex. No cap. My teacher, Moralea Golem, said that if we were like a boyfriend and girlfriend and we were, yeah, maybe Shira. What? If me and Shira were out on a date and we were trying to share a milkshake, that out of my straw, if I was the Jew, would come water and out of her straw would come blood. So it was like this very crazy situation. And how, what, what was one, what was one thing that we learned from this about why, how did the Egyptians drink? You can't go three days without water. How, what did they do? They had to buy money from the Jews, which is how the Jews started to make their money back from all the work they did. Because the Egyptians were buying water from the Jews. And so the Jews started to accumulate money which they were owed. But here's the deep stuff. Every plague is also mida keneged mida, something the Egyptians did to us, God did back to the Egyptians through the plague. So what's the main horrific thing that happened in the Nile that the they the threw babies. they threw babies into the Nile, right? So God's like, "Oh, you're trying to cover up their blood?" Yeah, right. You're trying to cut so the lesson for us is you can't you can't hide your stuff, guys. It comes out. You can't hide your bad deeds, your gossip. It comes out, of, yes, unless you do tshuva. I've mamish this. I get caught. Every time I try to lie, I get caught. I do. I mean, I try not to lie, but then, like, when it, like, happens and my midot are bad, and always, it always comes out. Like, I cannot, because our bad comes out. And this is the thing about the Nile is that it was showing it was showing what the Egyptians were doing. And it's not just about the Egyptians, it's a lesson for us. Like, if you're doing something that you need to hide, you already have a problem. And what are you guys I'll, gossiping about? What's yeah. well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. What oh, oh, you'll tell. And also, what's the other thing they did with blood, by the way? Pharaoh bathed in the blood of? Babies. 50 babies, yeah, right. So, the and Egyptians were in denial. The Egyptians were in denial. How long have you been waiting to say that joke? <laughs> Happy birthday! Okay. Um, and by the way, the stink, the stink, like it says, we learned in our Mashiach class last week, that it really, really stunk. And how does Mashiach judge righteousness? Oh. Uh, David says he wishes he could see the audience. They're hilarious. <laughs> It's what, over in, in Miami. He, he, he said he wishes he could see the audience. They're hilarious. Thank Aww. you. Thank you. <laughs> Send me money. We haven't been paid enough. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Let's go. We're, so we did blood. What's the lesson? Again? You can't hide. And when and your your dark your dark stuff it stinks. Here we go. Ready? Dum So 
So what? So here's my question: Is frogs okay? Does everybody know the big tale about frogs? What was unique about frogs? You start off as one frog. What was unique about frogs, says Rabbi Eliyahu Or, is that it wasn't actually frogs like we learned about in the children's tale. It was one. Big. Massive, blobby, huge frog that came like. Has anyone seen the blob? Or are you guys too young? Oh, oh I've yeah, seen yeah, the, yeah. Blob. the blob. The blob. It was like a big flipper. <laughs> it was like a massive Jabba the Hutt blob, oh, humongous creature that came like terrifyingly oh, out million. of yeah. the Nile. Yeah. And the thing is, yeah, what's up? No, no, I'll let you. No, go ahead. No, no I just want to backtrack. I was at David Sachs this year on Shabbat. Yeah. And just based on like what you said about the Nile and and the. Um, that your We're stuff comes mom. out, like from that. That's what the plagues were. You can't have your kids have your wife. <laughs> right. So David's actually saying that the before the frogs came out, before the frog came out of yeah. the Nile, yeah, there was a sound. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the sound was the, the, the Germans thought that the sound was the soul. Ooh, you guys hearing this? They thought they David Sachs wow. told Natan <laughs> Winkler the that the, the, there's a shriek of the frog that started to emerge before the frog. This was one of the most awful noises. The people are going crazy from the noises of the frog. They are saying that they thought it was the sound of the souls that were coming out from the babies that had been drowned in the Nile. Wow. Yeah, mom is crazy. Okay, but so back to this one frog. How do we get from one frog to all these millions of tiny frogs? What happened? You guys know. They were terrified. And what do you do when you're scared? You hit. You hit. But really, scared teaches us Star Wars and Yoda that fear is really the ikar of hate. And the thing is that every time they hate, they had anger, they would hit the frog. Millions of other frogs would either fly off of the frog or out of the mouth of the frog. And the problem is, and the lesson we learned here is super deep, guys. Check this lesson. When we're angry, we do things that are irrational. And we see that our anger actually has really bad effects. But we're so scared that what do we do? We deny it. No, you weren't listening because your boyfriend is putting flowers by your ear. I think you were <laughs> Wait, no, we hit people. No, it's a very deep lesson. When we're angry, we do things that are not wise and that have negative ramifications. And right. we keep doing it because we're scared. And the lesson of the frogs is in anger, you're going to do things that are irrational. So watch out because if your irrational anger or even your rational anger is causing bad in your life, it's only going to get worse and worse. The reason the frog multiplied into millions is because we kept hitting it because we were afraid. So note, if you're in a fight with your boyfriend or your spouse, your partner, and you're saying nasty things, it's getting worse. You could say, oh my God, this is like the frogs. I've actually caught myself in real life circumstances. Come sit next to me. Why does the care keep coming right close to me? Like, safe, safe for the moment. Wait, so, but the midstream were hitting the frog. Yes. So, we learned yeah, lessons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because that's the thing. There is never actually ever a them and an us. There's not never so an other. There really is never an other in this world. Everyone's just a reflection for you and your own stuff. The reasons you... I mean, there's, there's, there's the Jewish nation. Yeah. And there's different parts of the, the non-Jewish nation. We're not... We're, we are... There is a difference. No. There, yeah, there, yeah. there is in yeah. one sense, but Hashem Echad Shmo Echad, we're all one. There's no. My friend Pesach Stadlin has a. The only flag he'll fly is a flag of the globe. Whoa. There's only oneness, and the truth is, none of us are actually here. We're all just refractions and mirrors for you. We don't exist. It's just you and Hashem. So I'm tripping. Edibles are legal in LA? Okay, so here, let's get back in. So with the frogs, we learned it was one frog. But here's the thing. We call it frogs, but the sages actually say it could have been crocodiles or alligators. Now check this out. I'm going to get really vulgar. Men folk, good luck, because the frogs crawled into the testicles of the males to make them infertile as Mida Keneged Mida, that the Egyptians were trying to make the trying to have the midwives kill the Jewish babies and make them infertile. So the consequence was that the frogs would enter in through a portal, said place, wow. and the frogs were going into their bodies and chewing out oh, wow. the inside of the... Wow. 
Is there a more appropriate word for that? No. 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 You're right. Just, yeah. It was very right. I'm, I'm feeling it. You know what I mean? Really and they, and they, <laughs> no, seriously, the Midrashim talk about, if anyone saw the movie Alien, where there was like little things like projecting out of the stomach, there was like frog alligator. Uh, right it was really, really horrific. <laughs> All right, exactly. And not only that, but they couldn't they couldn't even function. Like they'd go for a chip, which I'm going to do now. They'd go for the chip and like an uh, alligator frog would come out of it. Also, get, is Hashem made them infertile by, by, you know. Via the frogs. Via the frogs, you know. As mira connected mira. Wow. Lice! Raise your hand if you've had lice. Oh, I have. Lice, lice, lice. Crawling lice in your hair. Crawling lice in your beard. Persians, crawling lice all over your back hair. Crawling lice all over the rest of the places where you have hair. Crawling lice everywhere. Everywhere there's hair. And let's say shaving was not a common practice back then. Lice, lice. I hope you feel itchy in your head right now. Someone starts to feel itchy in their head. Lice. Lice on your head. Lice. Oh, yeah. Not only that, but it says that the lice was so much, according to the Midrash, that the entire floor, Ellie, we learned this, how far did the entire floor turn to lice? Four feet of lice? An amma, about a foot and a half. A foot and a half of lice, that's wild. From here to here. So the whole floor became like quicksand, and you couldn't even step because you would sink in. And the Midrash actually says that it wasn't just lice, it was lice and 14 other insects. So now I'm at cockroaches, oh, oh, and maybe so worms. Not where the other worms. Like Not in the land of Goshen, Not but, in Goshen, but if a Yid was in Mitzrayim, if, they would have to go uh, through that. So there's, okay, I didn't write this down, but there's some plagues that the, it's all different opinions, that's the other thing. Yeah. Some plagues the Yidin suffered from, some plagues the Yidin didn't suffer from. I think the Rambam says they didn't suffer from any of them, but there's all different opinions as if the Yidin suffered, which they suffered from, or if they didn't suffer at all. I don't have it written down. Here's the thing. The necromancers, pharaohs, like dudes, said that they couldn't reproduce the lice. Why? What's the shot answer? The, the lice itself couldn't reproduce? No, the, so the pharaoh's people, magicians, the necromancers, they could reproduce blood, although it was an illusion. They could reproduce the frogs, although it was an illusion. But when it got to lice, they couldn't produce the lice because it was too small. They said, this is the finger of God. But the Midrash says something so cool. The Midrash says, actually, the reason they couldn't reproduce the lice effect in the world is because that in order to do sorcery, I just learned this this Shabbos, in order to do sorcery, a wizard, and this is actually really amazing if you're a hippie and you believe in drowning, to do sorcery, you have to have your feet planted firmly on the ground. And there was oh, no, no way. way, they couldn't, oh, wow. there was no ground to be fit. You can imagine walking through a pit of, you know those like fear factor shows where yeah. they have like oh, scorpions and cockroaches? Those. And your whole leg, I mean, I'm tall, so you could imagine like up to my calf, you're sinking in just like, what are the grossest insects? Lice. Lice. My head is a chicken. Cockroaches. Cockroaches. Scorpions. Centipedes are nasty. Oh my god. I woke up with one of those Those on me. Silverfish. Silverfish. Oh yeah. So the wizards couldn't reproduce the lice. Oh my god, this is so funny. Somebody's putting all these emojis. Shimshon is putting like lice emojis and stuff like this. getting all these emojis from? I don't know. He's an emoji wizard. He's standing firmly on the ground. But that's amazing because... You know, hippies talk about grounding yeah, nowadays, that there's like a really big benefit of your feet being securely on the ground. In Egypt, the wizards couldn't have their feet on the ground, so they couldn't do their sorcery any longer. Right. By the way, there's also an idea that Yaakov asked for his body to be taken out of Egypt generations before because he foresaw this plague, and he's like, oh, hell no. I am not having my body buried in those bugathon. So that's pretty crazy. Oh, it was Chizkuni who says about the wizards, just so you know. Now, what is the, what's the, what's the Mida, can I get Mida here? What's the message for us? We're only on the third plate. Get have a coffee. <laughs> Did you drive from San Diego? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Serena! Oh, yeah. This is the Malakabai. Come, 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 Serena. Oh, with pineapple? Wow. Oh. Serena, we're only on the third plate. Thank you so much for being here. I tease everybody. Thank you.
Oh, oh how perfect that the, the witch would walk in when we're talking about wizards. Uh, <laughs> Sabrina's uh, like Sabrina, a naturopathic Sabrina, yeah. medicine healer queen. And well, that's like, where Leela gets it from. Yes. <laughs> that's where Leela like, So it's uh, great that the witch Japanese would come in when we're talking about the witch. Okay. So yeah. Remember, guys, Facebook Live is accessible to the whole world. We have many non Jewish listeners, so let's stay slightly appropriate. Okay. Or, cool. Or not. Or so what? here's the thing we had to learn a lesson from lice. Every single thing we learned a lesson from. What Do you guys have any idea what the. What, what is Darren supposed to take? Because, like we said, the blood is on our hands, right? The blood is on my hands. I have to learn lessons from the plague. What's the lesson here from the lice? Mm, all the little things matter. Mm -hmm. All the little things matter. Shoot, Ariella, that's my personal interpretation too that no one I ever heard said before you and me. Okay. So I'll just tell you one thing it says is that the Egyptians wouldn't let the Jews ever shower and so they actually got like ratty, rancid, gross. Mm -hmm. Is this in Mizona? Yeah, that's Amen. Amen. They wouldn't let us shower. They wouldn't let them shower. Wow. And so the Jews started to get like who, gross. Who, 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 the Egyptians. I mean, what the Jews have? So that's why the lice came. The so Jews got lice and other they things in slave Egypt slave when they were slaves. Slavery, slavery conditions. Oh, You've seen sure. slave movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened in winter? I know. We were saving one for you the whole time. <laughs> well, shall we pass the pineapple so everyone can have please? Wow, he's got one of the best pineapple yeah, pineapple mama. season. Here, come. Will you put that for your mom? Yeah. She wants to Okay. Yes. So I, so, so I actually think that the lesson is about the small stuff. That the small stuff matters and it has an effect. This is a little bit gross, but you know, welcome to Anili Shear. I really believe that something like I call this the tenth test Jew, is the Jew who is willing to wipe the the pee off the seat. That's that's the small things to, to make the the small things matter. Yeah, sometimes you sprinkle. You gotta make sure you wipe the seat. That's a tiny thing. That's something that you neglect to do. <laughs> no, no, stop, stop, stop. But the, the li what's what's a little thing that matters? Like a little piece of litter, picking up the trash. What's a little thing that actually might matter to a chef? Saying thank you to your partner. This is a big one. Once you get into a relationship or when you're with a partner, it's easy to expect that your partner does things or someone in your family like um, like pays the DWP bill or like um, wash the dishes, like to say thank you for the Fill little the things. Brita. Or filled the Brita. Thank you, Neely, for the sheer. Okay, ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Dam, Sardaya, Kilim, Aro, Devesh, Lim, Harad, Arba, Choshech, Makapa, Okay, okay, it's supposed to be a fun activity. Yeah, but you only do it once. Wild beasts! Oh my gosh, I want that. No, with pineapple or the sugar. Thank you. What's schwat? I'm trying to really enjoy all the bites of food that I'm taking. Oh, that's oh. Cool. It's the fixing of eating and pleasure this month, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, among others. <laughs> eating and pleasure? <laughs> No, we're done. Okay. And we're done. Okay, the wild beasts. Wild beasts. So now, so far, you get the plagues. We got blood, yeah, got frog slash, alligators, crocodiles, lice, yeah, and we're on the fourth one, which is wild beast. This is crazy. Are you ready for this one? Yeah. It says in the shot that the beasts came with their land. Their what does that mean? Habitat. They came with their habitat. So some people say, like, wild pandas came from Chengdu, China. Those are not beasts, they're cuddly. Yeah. Oh, yeah? It could be wild. Try it out. They're terrible. Are they really? Oh my god. That's... I didn't know they're like out in the open in the really? wild. Yeah. Did you it's like I saw this no, the other night. It was like people underestimate the hippopotamus. Oh my god, the hippopotamus oh, no, is the most dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they showed me that on TikTok. <laughs> so, so, so people say that, like, have you guys ever seen a kangaroo fight on TikTok? Oh, it's insane. It's so awesome. They're like Donnie Darko. They like these like Donnie massive Darko. like things get up and they're like punching you in the face. Imagine you're just a now, guys. If you've never seen a kangaroo, you've never seen a panda, you've never seen a hippo. Well, in the Nile, there's plenty of hippos, but. If you've never seen something like this, how terrifying would it be if a Rottweiler shows up in your face and you've never seen a German Rottweiler? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've never seen these creatures. What's a terrifying creature? Koala. <laughs> 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 a 
a terrifying creature is like a lion staring at your face. A lion staring at you. Anyone seen the movie The Beast? My hairdresser was doing it while she was braiding my hair. Yeah. It's all about this lion who just attacks everyone and everything. I had to like close my eyes the whole time. She's like, girl, this is amazing. I love this movie, oh, yeah. The Beast. <laughs> Anyways, so here's the thing. But one interpretation says that it came with their land means the following thing. It says later on in the Parsha that Jews aren't allowed to do sorcery with two animals, and one of them is the Yidoni. Exactly. What is this Yidoni? Because you can't take a Yidoni, this is from Balak and Bil'am, and you can't take the bone of the Yidoni and put it in the skull of a baby and then a bird and then it will speak. So you can't use the bones of the Yidoni. So what's this Yidoni? I learned from my teacher Morley Agola. That's crazy. There was an animal that was half animal, half land. And it was attached to the land through its belly button and it had claws and arms. And when you would walk past this animal in the desert, it would like, kss, like, kss, like come to like attack yeah. you through its claws, but it couldn't move because it was attached to the land. So it was limited by its mobility? It was limited because it was attached to the land. Right. Only with sphinx. Almost. Like a snapping turtle. I don't, I don't know what these things are. Snapping turtles are sphinx, like the, like land. The sphinx was this creature that was Egyptian. No, the oh, I thought, I thought what you were saying. Yeah, it is. The Sphinx was part of, like, what that was a pyramid. No. The Sphinx is half. half like, oh, the Sphinx half, was like that. Body of a lion, head of a woman. Oh, Anyhow, that it says that, that this <laughs> animal and its <laughs> land, they all started moving in towards Egypt, and you had all these creatures on the floor, like, lashing out at the Egyptians as they would pass by. But not only that, yeah. that it says in the Midrash that the sea creatures came out of the sea with ten-foot arms, and they would you, the Egyptians would go run and hide in their homes, and the sea creatures, and I'm not making any of this up, it's all Midrash. By the way, if you believe in Rashi, what Rashi says, Rashi is 80% Midrash. Rashi's the main character. Okay, if you're into Rashi, you're into Rashi. Did I tell That's you this cool story? Response. I misha a couple you're on right one right. on site. I looked at this one girl, she showed up in front of me, I was like, oh my god, you're Rafi's husband. She's like, what? I was like, you're Rafi's husband. She's like, what? I was like, set them up, thank God, they have three kids, and one of them, their oh, first wow. one, is wow. named Rashi, wow. because wow. they wanted their son to be always to see himself in the Bible. Wow, that's so cool. Isn't that so cool? That's yeah, so, cool. Wow. so good stories. But the whole point, which I'm trying to get to, right. is Rashi. Oh, because Midrashi. Rashi is 80% Midrashi. So if you think these are all fanciful, but you think Rashi is the man, just check yourself. Don't get so crazy. De- like Spiritual metaphor is really deep, and maybe these things happen. Maybe there was a you don't understand. Anyways, of course there was. So you yeah, run yeah. and hide in your house, but these like sea creatures will reach over to Layla's head and like rip the roof off. How terrifying would it be if a sea creature octopus came... They ripped off Layla's head. <laughs> and ripped off the roof of your house and a lion what's the scare and pythons black mambas I had a trip scheduled to Brazil after Peru I did not go the fear of snakes got to me I couldn't do it yeah I I couldn't do it. in the Amazon jungle they have uh, that's the biggest they have the anaconda. what's it called anaconda anaconda yeah I, I, I pulled out so what's the scariest animal for you guys that would come if you were Egyptian uh, a big snake a big snake Here's the other thing. You have a question. Yeah. yeah. So the 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 let's say the maka would come, right? The other the first maka, maka that came, plague. the plague would come, right? It would leave, and the next one would come, or they would bind it to each other. So yeah, actually, it says that each plague was present within the plagues. Inter what's that called? Inter. Interstellar. David Sachs loves the word. <laughs> Inter included. That there was an element of each plague within the plague. We also know that within each plague, for sure, there was almost always snakes. Almost every plague came with snakes, like freaking falling out of the sky. Yuck. 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 Why? Yeah. Why do we know that? Those poor Why do we know that? I don't know. That's what the sages say. But it's interesting to me because of my deep fear and the connection between snake and Mashiach, right? We know snake is 358, Mashiach is 358. Right. Yeah, this is one of the best gematrias of all time, is that snake, the original primordial, as if evil... Uh-huh is the same exact energy as the Messiah because you have to go to your darkest, darkest fears right. and evils yeah, in order Mashiach. to bring... Nachash is 358, and the, separate, Wait, and the separated <coughs> series says that... And Atzei Shittim is one off. Yeah. Nachash was a prim- like primordial man, like the primordial... 
Energy. Energy. Of, like, he was a man. Like, uh, like, the snake was a man. The snake was a man, but it, yeah. was, it, yeah. was, it was the man that was created before Adam that was the primordial man. It was like right. the, it's how we, how we, but that's right. the point. It's tikkun. It's all tikkun. It's how we fix spiritual fixing comes from going to your lowest, most evil, rotten, scariest. In Parshat Chukka, we have to look the snake in the eyes to heal. Right. So there's snakes in every single plague. Some say they're into included. The thing about the study of the plagues is that there's so many opinions on each, it's hard to give an accurate presentation. Maybe but it's snake energy or literal snakes? Snake, well, <laughs> literal snakes, <laughs> literal snakes. <laughs> but the oh. whole, we're always fixing snake energy every day. Snake energy is the Sahara? Yeah, but it's also the highest form of healing, and it's facing your fears. Uh, so how come it's a medical sign has it's a snake? No, that's the whole point. It's, you're, it's from Parshat Chukah, where we had to stare into the eyes of the snake that, in order to heal it. The snakes bit us in Parshat Chukah, and then we had to look into the eyes of a snake idol, specifically, in order to heal you. You have to look into the eyes of the thing you're terrified of to heal yourself. Very deep teaching. Did everyone catch that? Yeah, I, I, We're only on the fourth plague. Is actually probably yeah. Um, Mina Kenegid Mina. Why the wild beast? You guys ever been to the Colosseum in Rome? No. So I went, but I didn't go in because what happened in the Colosseum was actually a torture chamber. They would unleash the slaves, and they would unleash wild beasts, and they would make them fight and watch them get torn to pieces. And this originated from Egypt. This is what the Egyptians did to the Jews. They would put them. This was their, they didn't have Netflix. So they would take a like a holy Jew, right. right? And they would put them into the room with, I don't know, what animal? A lion. A bear. A lion. A bear, right? Or, or whatever. And they would watch them tear them to shreds. So this was Mida Can I get you? You couldn't go into the Colosseum because of that? Uh, no, I didn't uh, want to. Oh. I didn't want to pay money to enter into a place of evil, so I circled it seven times and said to Halim. No! Oh. 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 Like the material right there. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a shofar in Rome. I, did. I wish that would have been cool. I don't know why I didn't have a shofar in Rome. I was there alone. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, not that that matters. Anyways, okay, let's go back in. Um, also, okay, we're going to skip some stuff. Next. Dumb. Okay. Datsa. <laughs> Adash. Yeah. Beata. Yeah. Did you do that during the no, so. okay. okay. The next one is called Plague, and this is, we're on five, so you guys decide how long you want this to go. You know, I'll stay here all night. The Balters are night owls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have another hour to go, at least. Okay, so Plague epidemic is where the rest, uh, the, uh, many of the animals that weren't demolished, they get sick and die. Um, not only that, but the Midrash says that their riders died too, and this was a very big impact on the economic system. The Mida Kanegad Mida is that the Egyptians totally effed with our finances and made us go completely poor after a series of turning us into slaves, taking everything we owned, and. Can and... <clears throat> we have a QT? Um, honey, 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 honey. Yes, yes, yes. Sure, thanks. Um, nothing, no, no, no caffeine, please, uh-huh. and no chamomile. But, so the, the Egyptians need, need us for? I, but I no, I'm totally well. I don't know. I thought we sold the the water to them. No, initially part of the slavery, we were just regular citizens in Egypt. Remember, we came down as like a family of illustrious, strong men and their families. And we had it all good, but then they started to have us work for Pharaoh, and then the Egyptians stopped working, and we kind of took over their jobs because we wanted to be good citizens, and then they stopped paying us, and then they started enslaving us worse, which was like a slow system of not just diminishing our, like, uh, um, integrity, but also our finances. I'm going to skip, I'm going to just kind of go a little faster, so we're on boils. Boils are crazy. By the way, what I told the people that you missed is the best idea for a parsha bow is you serve on Shabbat tomato soup and then a piece of bread with zatar because zatar is hyssop and that's what they painted the doorpost with. So blood on the doorposts, get it? But the other thing you can do if you like candy, which is what I did for years in the seminary system, is you go to the candy store and you buy a different gummy to represent each plague. The best one is that in Israel, for whatever weird reason, L'chaim tovim b'lashalom. Thank you. For whatever reason, in Israel, they have gummies that are made of eggs. I mean, no, not made of eggs. They look like eggs. They have it in munchies? Okay, so get this for your Shabbos table because it looks like a boil. (laughs) <laughs> it's like this white thing with like a yellow bubble over it okay you guys into it serve boils at your Shabbos table but why is this so perfectly Parsha appropriate 
Because like this, the thing with the boils that was so bad, and it was made from handfuls of soot, which is this whole other trippy thing, and fans learners think Kisi Akavod and the fight between Yaakov and Esav with the, the, the vac that threw, flew all the way up. Second, I don't really understand. No, no, advanced That's learning for the end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Facebook, we have got all these holy okay. souls on it. Yeah. Um, so what's crazy about the, this, I learned this from my teacher more than I learned this too. The boils were crazy. You'd have to see how you could figure this out, holy doctor. The top was crusty and hard. The insides were gooey. So they tried to put softening cream on the top because it was so painful and crusty, but then the insides would just ooze more. Oh, and nice. then they would try to put hardening cream to try to get the soft part to harden and then it would crust over. The boils were like the word they could not they could barely stand anymore. The lesson that I take from the boils, which I think is fascinating, is that when we have a problem that seems unsolvable, we go this way, we try that way, but the one place that we forgot to turn is upwards. Wow. When you're stuck in a bind and you have one problem that makes you go, oh, oi, this is not good this way, oi, this is not good this way, turn to the Ribbon and look up, right? We keep trying to find solutions and none of the solutions were working. Winkler's having a, Winkler's making no, problems again? No, I'm not going to but I can't say that. It'll be misconstrued. On Facebook. Tell you afterwards. Okay. Can you, can you it's elaborate on that? It's like, and tart, it's amazing, but I can't tell you. Someone having you. problems but turning up. Yeah, because a lot of times we have problems, be it financial, be it physical, be it relationship, and we're trying to solve it this way, we're trying to solve it that way, and there's one way that we forget, which is just talking to the Ribbon of and talking to Hashem. That would either give you a change of heart, it'll give you insight of what That's the doing. only way the answer it'll is. change the course of nature. This is blood on the doorpost in India. Yeah, the only way is turning up to a shed. Peterman says that you should be like a bird. He uses the Yiddish word for a little bird, which I'm not going to say out loud. It's not going to sound very nice. With the public sphere. It starts with an F. Oh. And he says you should be like the bird. You should you eat your food, and you should look up. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. It's also it's rhyme with like the neck. Mm-hmm. Like it's compared to the neck, and that's where we're really constricted to the point where we couldn't daven. So the closest thing to davening that started this process was sighing. Mm-hmm. It was our sighs. Oh, are we not going to talk about that? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's our sighs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The crux. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so like, that's yes, what's yeah. interesting that you're saying this. because. That's oh, so that's a great point and a great tip left for the Facebook people. If you're not so religious or so Jewy or just not even tuned in and you can't figure out your life, Rabbi Nachman, a great rabbi from a few hundred years ago, says just sigh. Let's all take a sigh. Ah. And even that is considered a super high prayer because it's showing that you're you're turning to Hashem like oh Hashem. Uh, what were you, you want to finish your sentence? <laughs> uh, but I think it's really interesting that that's where they were stuck. Also, they couldn't they lift couldn't, their they couldn't neck. lift their heads and their necks to Hashem, up. right? And that's like what was the ultimate kind of like I'm wondering when did we start sighing now? That's a great I'm wondering question. who was after this Maka. That's interesting. To be really after the boils, yeah, the boils yeah. were brutal. And there's really interesting Midrashim if they affected the Jews or not. My rabbi in Bahrain, his name is Rabbi Avram Iskowitz, he said that don't say oi, say I, as in Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Oh. 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 Okay, so next one, we're on number seven. And guess what? There's not much after the 10th legs except for to ask each one of you one 30 second thought. But hail! Oh, yeah, it's so cool. It's rain and hail! Hallelujah! It's rain and hail! The hail was super cool. I just actually learned, I thought it was like big. Like, that's, has anyone here ever been in a hailstorm? Yes. What was like the worst you guys have been in? The big ones. How big? Five feet. Oh, are golf, golf balls. balls. Golf balls? Yeah, and are more. golf balls dangerous? Golf yeah. balls on yeah. scales. Yeah. So yeah. the Midrash says these were boulder-sized. Oh, wow. Boulder-sized yeah. hail, but it wasn't just boulder-sized hail. A golf ball can go through a window yeah. shield, but it was ice with fire inside. No way. Yeah. Dude, this is, the cra- this is shot. Yeah. That's crazy. This is, yes, and the crazy Two thing, opposites. and the, exactly, and the lesson here for us is that if you really want to serve God, you have to bring together opposites. Mm-hmm. It's a great marital advice. Could you, could you give me an example of something that's opposite? Is that for marital? Yeah, because you're, you're, let's say you really want to serve God and you want to get up for shachari, but you have a nature of laziness, you have to make them work together. The opposites, the desire to do something, and the laziness, you got to figure Shabbos. out. That's probably not a great example. But Shabbos is like the perfect example, right? Shabbos is the like most spiritual experience, but how do you, like Rabbi Nachman mm. says, what's the That's essence of Shabbos? The food of Shabbos. Physical, yeah. 
Amazing. Your food, your food is like what makes your shot physicality. Living, that physical, that uplifting physical. That's opposite to like what is spiritual. You would think one is being spiritual is like you're, you're making a hives and you're stuffing your face. Not a vibe. But it's a vibe point. where we pray, yeah. and then that's how you get holy. As yeah. you're making the high, you're using no, the physicality, the opposite. You guys, you guys pray the same place. Uh, no, I'm saying like, that you take a lechaim, which is so shallow. You take a shot of alcohol, which is like so weird, so bad for your body, and like probably not good for your shallow bite. And you take a shot, and it's so physical. But you're if you but do it for God, right. if you do it right, for the right. binding of opposites, it could be the holiest thing ever. Right. It's probably not a good example, also. But Ariel's example is great. But um, the hill, very interesting thing, is that some of the hill, Hashem stopped in the middle of the sky for the next 41 years until Yahushua, Joshua, after Moshe, entered into Israel, and they needed the rest of the hill for a battle. So for 41 years, these monster boulders of fire and ice were just stuck in the sky. Just fun fact. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. So they were just, like, you could look up and there was hail. I don't know. It's a good question. But I like this. I was thinking about this today because of all the things we can't see and we don't, we underestimate what God has in store. Like 41 years from now, he could have a plan for your life of something that he's doing right this very moment. Mm -hmm. That was another cool thing I learned about Yosef, by the way, just to backtrack is, I'll try to find the source later, maybe. But it says that never give up on your dreams. It took 22 years for Yosef's dream of seeing the brothers bow down to actually come to fruition. So the advice that sages give is never give up on your dreams before 22 years. For 22 years? Because that's how long it took from Yosef, the dreamer, from his dream to become a reality. What if the guys are 90? It's game over, no? <laughs> no. Start sighing. <laughs> no, that's 120. You know, yeah, there's like years. years. Okay. okay. So that was that was a little quickie on hail. We go datsach adash beachav, and now oh by the way, so that was all vayera. The first seven were last week's parsha. Now we're getting into bo, which is this week's parsha. Don't worry, there's only three. What was the meter can I get up for hail? Uh, I read one thing that it says in this book that um, Sena Reena that uh, the Egyptians used to throw stones at us. And also that they used to make us plow all their fields with fertilizer, but their fields were also swamps. So they made us do all this work for nothing just to demoralize us. Like they'd give men women's work and women's work to men. And they'd make us do work on these swampy fields that we'd never see the fruits of our labor. It's like ultimate tortures ecologically. So they would make us plant grounds that nothing would come of it, and the hill destroyed all the ground. Mamash just for torture. Mamash just for torture. It was the worst. It was, it, I told you, it was compared to the Holocaust, Mamash. We think the Holocaust was the worst, and it was, but the precedent of that is Egypt. It's just just shooting babies in the air, cousin. Shalom Nida. Okay, so now we're in Parsha Bo, and we have the final three plagues. Locusts is fascinating. Okay, so now we're on to locusts, yeah? yeah? First of all, this tribe in Zimbabwe, this one just here, one of the things that they know from the tradition is which locust is still kosher. There's a tradition that one type of locust is still kosher, and they told me that this specific locust, they know which one they can eat. They've been eating it ever since. And that was the locust that wow. came to Egypt. I, I don't know. But it could be, it could be, it has a chet on its chest. No way. That's what they told me. It has a chet on its chest, which There's is fascinating because the doorway is also a chet. Did you eat it? it? I'm a vegetarian. Oh, are you? <laughs> I did not. You, you were taking pictures of Latin heads coming out. And they're, and, they're, and they're not like this big, they're like that. Yeah, they're um, like chunkers. No, yeah, I'm not yeah. killing that. Solid source of grain. I'm killing it. I, I, you know, you can totally fry it up. And she watched. Oh, you just no, watched I didn't do that. God oh, forbid. I, did, I sat there like hiding behind my shlomo kali This is a side question. Are you vegetarian? Are you vegetarian? I was four. I realized where meat comes from. I couldn't believe we kill things. It made no sense to me. We're eating dead things. Sabrina, my nutritionist, would really like me to not be a vegetarian. You should try some steak from the Lucas! Lucas! What's amazing about these locusts? Locusts is that the Midrash says this is crazy. So first of all, the locusts were so thick. Has anyone ever seen this? Apparently you could see it in like New Jersey. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. In the hail, thunderstorms were like the loudest, craziest lightning and thunderstorms you've ever seen. What's the craziest thunderstorm you guys have ever been in? In Israel. In Israel? In New York? Yeah. Apparently Jersey has like rolling thunderstorms. I was in Rwanda. And the thunderstorms were so great that the buildings shook. Oh my God. That's crazy. 
The building shook. Imagine a boulder, like a hail boulder. Imagine hail boulders with crazy thunder. Okay, That's back to the locusts. So the locusts, according to the Midrash, had backs that writhed like snakes, wings like eagles, claws like lions, and they spit poisonous venom, and they would jump on the Egyptians and gouge out their eyes. And any amount of spit that could drip from them, if it landed on you, it was poison and you died. <laughs> Can you just imagine that? Um, close your eyes for one second. Imagine a locust, that the back of the locust is like a snake, the claws were like lions, the wings were like eagles, and they spit poison and gouged out their eyes. I mean, this is like horror movie tonight. Again, I don't understand God. But here's the thing. The Egyptians were actually kind of happy about them because they were starving at this point, And they thought that they could pickle the locusts and eat them. Now, the crazy thing is that when the locusts died, so they all put them into pickling jars, these enormous things. They thought they'd find something to a, eat. A huge? Like, yeah, a big jar. His homie was yeah, huge. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Jars. How do you fit it in a jar? Well, when I went to Noah's Ark in Kentucky this year, they showed me how they stored things. And they had quite large ceramic vessels. Egy yeah. Egyptians were like known for their technology. That's also true. They probably had way better technology well, than us. Right? Yeah. 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 How many, like, and by the end of all the plagues, they seemed like very, like, disaster. Like, how many Egyptians were alive? Were any of them alive? Like, I can, I can... I'm going to drop an even crazier fact on you in the plague or two, in next plague. Okay. No, a lot of them were killed. I don't know how many were like killed. It's a really good just, question. I don't know. These are really... Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Egyptians like, were like, dying. Boulders falling boulders from the, boulders sky, falling from the like sky. Wild beasts attacking you. You're not surviving. Not surviving right. And also the trauma that we experienced from watching it. You know, that's like... That's not... That made me sick to think about it. But check this out. Super cool about the locusts is when Moshe and God removed the locusts, they came back to life, resurrected, and flew out of the pickling jars and came alive again, <laughs> leaving the Egyptians with nothing to eat. But my teacher taught me that the cool thing about locusts is that locusts, like many animal schools, uh, insect schools, they all, when they fly, something happens to them scientifically, and their brains all sink up into one, and they fly together oh, as a pack. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we're meant to learn from the locusts, is to fly. Swarm mentality, is that what it's called? Hive mind. Hive mind. Hive mind. Hive mind. They, their brains actually physically sink up. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Darkness is the craziest plague, in my opinion. You guys ready? Two more. Datsa Adash Be'achav. Okay. Darkness. I believe in a thing called love. Just, 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 just checking the time. We started at 8.30. Now it's? That's 10, 10, no, it's not. Wait, 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 okay. An hour and 17 minutes. We'll go for 12 more. 13. Darkness was the name of the band that Thank you, yeah. <laughs> okay, darkness. So the Mijash, you say, okay, now we're going to do a game. Okay, everyone stand up. And on the count of three, just do any pose you want. So you can sit down, you can raise your arm, you can do the YMCA. But on the count of three, yeah, Karate Kid is good. On the count of three, everyone strike a pose and hold it, okay? One, two, three. Now you'd be stuck like that for the next... Show the audience. You gotta show the audience. You've been stuck like that for the next six days. Don't move. Oh, look at them. <laughs> There's the husband and wife hugging. If you were in attention, let's say you were reaching for the cookies, you'd be stuck like this for the next six days. The darkness was so thick that they actually got stuck. Now imagine, they still had to go to the bathroom. You're reaching for the cookie. Sorry, it's not disrespect to you. It's just, I, I know you, you know what I mean? I told you earlier. So the darkness was so thick, the Midrash says it was the thickness of a coin, and that's torture. Right? You like if you if you're if you're you could be stuck on the toilet or whatever they had, you could be stuck I mean, in, you, if you were bending down, you're stuck like that for that six days. 
Yeah. 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 So now, Abby, there was two things that happened in the Plague of Darkness. One is totally creepy, and one is horrific, and probably the most impactful thing of the whole Parshas. One is that the Jews were instructed to go unwelcomed into the Egyptian homes, look for where their gold, silver, jewelry was, so, and the, so the Egyptians would hear people creeping around their homes, so that no. later, when the Jews asked, oh, can we have your gold and silver, they'd be like, we don't have any. They're like, yeah, you do, it's in your left corner on the side. In the drawer. Wait, so what did we have? Like, dark vision? Like, what was the vibe? No, we didn't have darkness. There was no darkness for the Jews. We was, saw everything, but the homies were just. We still. saw. Well, there's different Not opinions. If some Jews were, if the, depending on your righteousness, maybe you experience some level of darkness, but for the most part, Jews had light and the Egyptians had darkness. That's crazy. Now, the lesson in this, which is amazing, and then we're going to get to the crazier thing, my teacher Leah says if you don't see the pain of your brother, you're in the dark. The punishment of the Egyptians not being able to see was because they didn't see or experience the pain of their brother. So some said, okay, yeah. as you have it, you don't see the pain of your brother, you're stuck in the dark. But now here's the deepest thing, Abby, and this is terrifying. Mm. And, I, and they say that the precedent of Egypt will be the precedent for the Geula. Wow, I already got a pain in my shoulder just even thinking about it. Oh, cheers to the empaths. Um, cheers, Monsieur. I feel like as an empath, because I, mean, I, I am an empath, right? I kind of shut myself off because every time I see someone having pain, it just makes me have pain yeah. and not productive. Be a therapist. It's magical. I'm like, oh, no, you're experiencing pain, pain <laughs> in your stomach. They're like, how do you know? I'm like, I feel it right? on oh. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, well, I, whatever. That's a label. Back to the darkness. Yeah, we're all one. Back to the darkness. <laughs> yeah, all the labels. Oh, you're making me nervous, huh? Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> what were the Jews doing? Serafina, check this out. That's crazy. What were the Jews doing? Yo, you're going gonna, you're gonna to lose your mind. Get ready. I'm listening. What were the Jews doing, do, doing during these six days? Well, what happened was that 80% of the Jews died in the plague of darkness. 80%, 80% four fifths of the Jews died in the plague of darkness. We know this because it says in the Pshat that we left Egypt, the Chamushim. And Chamushim can either mean we left armed or we left, Rashi says, as a fifth. But I thought they just decided to stop. Why did we die from what? You'll exactly. See, see, yeah. from the Ariana Grande had it. <laughs> so you say you just thought they decided to stay back, but then where did they die? So then their grave was going to be in Egypt. So either, spiritual metaphor, they chose to stay because they didn't want to leave Egypt. They didn't want to leave the West Side, Century City, Real Foods Daily, Nagila Pizza, yeah. Oh Hell Moshe. Oh, they, did, they had it good. They didn't want to leave Egypt. But did they have you guys ever been to Jerusalem too in New York? They didn't want to leave Egypt. Have you seen Miami beaches? They didn't want to leave Egypt. Those beaches, I tell you. Right? Right? They didn't want to leave Egypt. And so there was their burial place. So if you want to take it as a spiritual metaphor, yeah, they never left Egypt. There was their burial place. If you want to take the Midrash according to how it says, what happened was that they died in the plague of darkness so that their families could bury them so they wouldn't be embarrassed when the Egyptians came out of darkness that the Jews had died. They wouldn't know. So we spent six days burying our loved ones. Not, uh, this is a very so well known we Midrash because we didn't want to leave. Rashi, God's Wait, like, I'm taking you out. We just, like, so according to the spiritual metaphor, if you're taking it as a spiritual metaphor and not as a truth, mm -hmm. I like to, I take it as a truth. Right. If you want to take it as a spiritual metaphor and say Midrash, you're crazy, well, you died because you stayed in Egypt. So that's your burial place. But the Jews that, let's say you want to take it as a truth, they died, Hashem sent a plague and everyone just passed. Mm -hmm. So, so you'd wake up and four fifths of your family were dead. Not a vibe. No. Really hardcore. And it's it's a message for us. Like, come on, guys, let's go home. Like, I, and now I'm talking a big game, but like, let's go home. Like, what are we doing here? Ooh, there awkward Zara silence in the room. Uh, Say what? Zara and, uh, there is Zara yeah. in Israel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, here we go. Finally, finally. <laughs> Plague of the firstborn. This one is crazy. Pharaoh has lost his mind and is now running door to door screaming to each Jewish person, please leave, please leave, please get out of here, please go, please. Pharaoh himself is running door to door saying, please get out of here. So before the plague of the firstborn, there was a revolution of all the firstborns because they were warned and they went against their own parents and there was a slaying fest. 
and the firstborns would come to their parents and say, do something, do something, and their parents wouldn't do anything. So they start slaying, and there was a revolution in Egypt where all the firstborns had an uprising, and now the Egyptians were killing the Egyptians. Civil war. But not only that, you think your firstborns are already dead? The dogs went to the graves of the dead firstborns, undug them, and pulled them out, and dragged them through the streets, says the Midrash. It says there was never a screaming like this in the entire world, and there will never be a screaming like this in the entire world. There was never shrieking like the plague of the firstborn. And the media can I get Mia? You mess with Hashem's firstborn, it's Got not it. going to be good for you. Is that one of the reasons why like dogs are rewarded? rewarded? So no. it says that the dogs were rewarded for well that and yes oh, yes that there's that two and, and the barking and the bark. yeah. that they didn't bark but that was also an idea that there was so dog so gods so uh, yeah. bordering the border of Egypt and yeah. they Anubis. went what is it called uh, Anubis is right dog. dog gods I don't know but anyways so those are the plagues. So before the parshas, so those are the plagues, guys. Good job. We did a whole lesson on the plagues. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to conclude us with a few yeah, ideas yeah. so you know the rest of the parsha bow. And then anyone can go, but I, I really want to do a go around of what's the main thing you took from this. Um, conclusion, what happens? May I have the homage, please? Thank you. There was a lot. I don't even know which one. So the, again, we're in, what parsha are we in this week? Parsha oh. Bo. And by the way, uh, an amazing thing about okay. So let me okay. Here we go. Let's just finish the parsha really quick. We have all ten plagues. The Jews are now. Um, at what point did they get together to do their first seder? During what? When? Passover. What does Passover mean? When the angel of death <coughs> passed <coughs> over. So what plague was it in? Yeah, the Passover night where we got our freedom and life, they got death. It's this other crazy exchange. So that was happening. The roasting of the Paschal lambs was happening. The blood on the doorpost with what? With what? Uh, Zatar. Zatar was happening. Um, and, and Pharaoh's going around saying, leave, leave. It's time to leave. And actually, we were free by the end of Parshat Bo, but only in next week do we actually leave Egypt through the sea in Parshat Beshalach. Now, what's really cool about Parshat Bo, which is an obvious but special one to remember, is that God tells Moshe, Bo el paro. But Bo does not mean go to Pharaoh. What does it mean? Um, um, come to Pharaoh. And the deep teaching that we all know about this is, I'm coming with you. You think you're scared to face your darkness? You think you're fear, scared to face the stubborn leader inside of you who doesn't want to let you go, who does, who wants you to be constricted in Egypt, who wants you to be a slave? God's like, yeah, face your stuff, but guess what? Boel paro, come, come. What do you mean come to Pharaoh? Come with who? Come with me, says God. Hmm. You don't have to face your darkness alone. You don't have to face your suffering alone. That God is with us mm. through the whole thing. And as we learned before, when everything seems absolutely crazy, that's what we call Seder. Seder. That's what we call order. When your life seems out of whack and everything's upside down and you want to cry and fall apart, that's we can trust in the process that that's, that that's also in God's perfect order too. Wow. This wow. Was, this was, thank you so much. Wow, that's crazy. So let's, let's have a bracha. Let's have a bracha. Um, may Hashem bless us um, to know that all of the hardest things and all of the redemption are in written in creation, even before the first Shabbos. So that's not just for the people, but it's for you and me. Mm-hmm. Hashem should bless us. Hashem, thank you for helping us learn Torah. Hashem, thank you for the Balters. Hashem, for making such a space and all the Balter kids who mm-hmm. so beautifully served and cleaned up and brought chairs and helped and ordered a surprise sushi and brought pineapple and chips and hummus and cookies and <laughs> and tea. And thank you to this special room of close friends who wanted to come out and learn Torah about the plagues. And thank you to everyone who inspired it. May all those we prayed for have a blessing and. May there not be another day count after 101. May we go home through an even more incredible split sea, but uh, with no pain and suffering for anyone. And uh, let our learning bring peace in the world. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 How we do this, Shira? So many kids. Break it down, work. Okay, here's your chance to.
escape, yes. but for anyone that wants to stay for 10, 15 more minutes, I say we pass the phone and you share what was most interesting for you or what you think about the plagues. You must speak in under 30 seconds because or else we'll be here all night long. Would anyone like to take the phone and go first? Yes, what'd you learn? I learned that Hashem is the king of everything and we have to trust in Hashem and always understand that just because our life has some darkness, Hashem has the plan. He's creating structure in our life and God bless Neely. <laughs> Who learns? What'd you learn from the class? Shira, what'd you learn? Come on, Shira. You also don't have to be on Facebook Live. Should I turn it off? You guys I don't know. You're getting more attention with my face on this. <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? Oh, no. All right, guys. Parshat Bo. I hope you enjoyed learning about the plagues. Thank you, Kat, for inspiring this. You want, you'll do it on Facebook Live? Okay, Abby will share. Abby! I, I, what stayed with me most is that, um, when things are wrong in our lives, we always look to the right, we look to the left, we look for, you know, a solution, but we forget to look up at God and go. he has our oh, solution. Like boils. Somebody get yeah. Abby cool. some boil, some boil buddies for <laughs> Okay. Anyone else for Facebook Live? Anyone else brave enough? Well, Guys, you realize I do this every week. Process, you could see my pimples and everything. I, okay. I thought the most interesting thing for me was that. The staff being made out of the, out of the, possibly being made out of the um, tree, tree of, of knowledge. knowledge, plus the idea of the snake energy yes. that we're sort of transforming and that together for me was like, oh, that's an interesting connection. Very good. And they say that the original, that they say okay. that there's a snake under, that there's, that the energy of evil in the world emanates from a massive snake that lives underneath the land of Egypt till this day. That's not crazy. Yeah, how crazy. Anyone else for Facebook Live, we say farewell to the community. We love you, learners. Thank you for learning with us. Parshat, Vaira, and Bo on the plagues. He's uh, 28 years old. 28? How old are you? What am I? I'm 22. 22? Yeah. I thought you were Ellie's compadre. And uh, tomorrow night, we're doing a song circle at the Happy Minion for anyone that wants to come. See ya. And come to the Lost Tribe Share at the Cats' House. We'll let you know the date. Hi. Thanks for watching with us.